folks have had some friends ask about doing green screen, so I'm going to jump right into how I do it. I've downloaded some video here of my buddy Matt uh, from Matt's Big Dream. And so he's got a really nice looking mat here that he's got here. I say mat, nice green screen. Pretty well lit. There's going to be a problematic area right here where he's got some very dark here. If he had an extra fill light or something there, it would get rid of that. That's going to be problematic right here. But all in all, this is a really nice green screen. This ought to key out really well. I'm in the W Premier Pro CC 2015. It's May of 2016 as I do this. So what I've got, so I've got Matt, I've pulled in a little bit from his from his vlog, just downloaded this from his YouTube, he gave me permission to do this. I'm going to pull the video portion, this up one uh, level, so his audio is still down here, it's still joined up with this video, but I've got a hole down here where I can put some video underneath it. I'm going to pick a, uh, like an animated background or something here from Digital Juice, let's see what we got. That's kind of cool, isn't it? That's kind of cool. Ooh, Matt we might like something crazy like that. Let's, that's actually pretty cool. I like this Jovian Doubts. Well, let's go. What's this look like? Let's just test that. Look. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's go ahead and give him this really neat, this uh, shaded envy here from Digital Juice. By the way, I'm a member of Digital Juice. I've joined their lifetime membership thing, which is $500 to join, but there are like 10,000 awesome backgrounds and all kinds of lower thirds and things. So I'm just saying, if you've if you got the money to do it in your video editor, it's awesome to get the Digital Juice package. You get everything they make for life. It's awesome. So here we go. I've got uh, the 172, and it's not going to be long enough to do the whole clip. Now, so I'm just going to pull it down here again. I can do that. Uh, another, I don't, wish there were a way to loop these things, make them just automatically loop. And there may be. I just, I just never have found it myself. If I were to copy this, like this, C. And maybe go out here to the to here and go V and V and V. I'm doing a control V. The control V is to paste. Then I could do it as many as many of them as I want to, just pull them in so they all seamlessly loop together. The thing that's cool about these, watch when you get to the end of this, it just seamlessly loops back over and you don't see any jump or anything. It's it's splendid uh, pieces of work they do. I'll go ahead and get these here at least last two. So now what I want to see is not the green, I want to see this other stuff underneath there. So what I'm going to do, you see I already have it picked over here, Ultra Key. If it's not there, you can go to your effects. Now, folks, I am using the Editing CS 5.5 view. You can use the standard view. All these same things here, you're going to have effects. It's going to might pop up in different places if you've got the different view. I like the, I'm old school, I like the editing 5.5. I don't think we've ever had a better workspace than this one right here that I'm looking at. So most of my tutorials I do it in this. You can go to editing 5.5 if you want to follow me. Otherwise, just find out wherever your effects is and type in the word ultra over here, U-L-T-R-A. And as you see, it will pop up under keying. I'll tell you at the end of this video and a cool story about this ultra key. Uh, it, it involves me, and so we'll, you, you'll tell me thank you at the end of this, but you don't have to watch it till the end. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag that ultra. I just grabbed a hold of it and drag it and pull it over here onto uh, Matt's video. Now, you didn't see anything happen, did you? That's well, because we've not applied anything yet. I'm going to go up here under effects control, see that? And right here we are, and I've already actually done some color correction to Matt. Let's go ahead and delete this color correction. I don't really want to do that just yet. We'll, you can see Matt's a little washed out in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch the little uh, uh, eyedropper here. And I'm going to go to a place where there's a good medium green. I don't want the real bright green. I don't want the real dark green. I want something sort of in the middle, something that's kind of fairly close to his face. And that's the video. Or that's the video. That's actually the green that you want to pick. So I'm going to pick that. Now you look here and you've seen a whole lot of trash. Well, we you typically do, so you're almost always going to have to do a little bit of adjusting. And in Ultra, the place where you usually find that is in Matte Generation. And I, I go here to Pedestal. I'm going to go ahead and flip this little uh, triangle down here. I'd rather pull this and drag over the top of these numbers. So I'm just going to start pulling this to the right. And you're going to see some stuff here happen. Look at this. It's starting to clean that up, isn't it? And I'm going to pull all the way over to here. And look at that, it's almost perfect, really. Now you see a little bit of fringe around Matt right here. Now this we can usually get rid of if you go up under Matt Cleanup. So I'm gonna do the Matt Cleanup here, and I'm probably gonna choke this. I'm gonna go ahead and do a choke. This means it just draws it in just a little bit. So I'm gonna do the choke just a little bit. And look at that, you see we're all oh, we're getting. I'm still gonna leave maybe just a hair dab of fringe. I don't want to totally maybe get rid of all that and start making him look jaggedy, right? I can go here to soften and I can do the, bring the soften up just a little bit and that softens it. Just to see what's happening there, that edge. Now it's pretty much gone. Now there's still a little bit of shadow right in here. And the only way I know to have fixed that maybe would be to have this map put, like I say, some more fill light behind it so we don't have the shadow. I don't think it's going to be a major problem with this mat. 
uh, that we're pulling here. So I'm going to go ahead just to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull this in so that we've got that there. Now it's where I might go and, and you know, make Matt look like he's not so washed out. So I'm going to click on his video again. And I'm going to go up under, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and flip my Ultra Key closed. I think I'm fairly happy with that. We might do some more adjustments, but let's go ahead and do some color up here. I'll click the color and I'm going to go ahead and do the Lumetri uh, color. I'm probably going to say Matt's a little overexposed maybe, so I'm going to pull it back just a little bit here. Let's give him a little bit of mystery there, make him just a little bit darker. Let's say that his saturation maybe ought to be up just a little bit. I don't know. What do you think of his tone? Is he too red? Maybe we pull him back this way just a little bit. Now, I very seldom work with tint because tint just does some weird stuff. He did seem to be maybe just a little bit too much toward the pink on that. Let's look what we could do with shadows here. I, don't, I wouldn't mind darkening a little bit because he's got dark hair and it's almost like uh, that makes him fit into the dark background a little bit better. So I've just darkened that a little bit. Contrast, I don't know we need to do a whole lot with contrast. Maybe just a little bit. So I've done a little bit of color adjustment here. And so there we go. We got a pretty nice mat pulled on my buddy Matt. So let's uh, go back into our editing 5.5 view up here. And now if I want to pull this, click on this and hit the tilde key, we can actually watch a little bit of this I'll and how it looks. Go ahead and share the link to my homies on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter. And yeah, not terrible. Uh, let me just do a, a, a tilde out to get out of that again. Let's say we want to put in a lower third or something over that. I also have some lower thirds that I pulled here from uh, Digital G, so let's see what memory box looks like here. I'll have to see what these, some of these are. That's not bad. I don't know, open issues. That's kind of cool, isn't it? How's that look? It looks like it kind of flips up. Let's go ahead and give Matt a lower third here. And so I'll show you just kind of how this works uh, since we're playing around just a little bit. So there we go. I just pulled this, uh, and, it, and it, since this is 1080p and Matt's video was 720p, the, at least the version I pulled down, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. I'm gonna click on this. This is the lower third. I'm going to go into effects control here and I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to go to scale and I'm probably going to scale this back a little bit so that it's more like what you might see uh, on a 1080p piece of video that's going to come in. I think maybe it's a little high so I'm going to pull it down just a little more. I kind of like for it to settle right along in there. So let's go ahead and maybe do a, a right here from right click on this and do an apply default transition. I'm going to kind of do a cross dissolve in on this. Let's see what it looks and like. Share the link. To my homies on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and all that good stuff. So there we have a lower third that's going to come in. We could pull this in a little bit closer here at the beginning. And we could go over here and we'll say File, New. And let's do a title. Let's just say Matt's Big Dream. I'm going to copy that. Control C, OK. And what I should have done, I still can do, is just pull over here into the middle of the lower third so I can see where it's gonna be. And then I can actually go here and I can, uh, I don't know, I can use one of my templates or I can actually just type some text. Let's grab the text tool and do this. And we'll say Control V and we put Matt's Big Dream in there. It's too small to, or too big to see right now. So I'm gonna do a Control A to select everything. I'm gonna take this font size over here and bring it back to where we can see Matt's Big Dream. I don't like that. I don't, that font, I guess I'm gonna go to Myriad. Myriad Pro is not a bad font. We'll go to not the condensed, but the regular version. That might be still a little bit too big. Matt's Big Dream, we might say Indiana or Indianapolis. I think Matt lives a little outside of Indianapolis, but that still looks pretty good, doesn't it? So now I've got some text to go over the top of this. I'm gonna hit save. And uh, so now I can go in here and I can put Matt's Big Dream over the top of that. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what we got here. And I might just go ahead and do the right click and do the apply to default transition there as well. And we go out to here. Let's make that thing come in just a little bit faster. Let's say uh, speed duration and let's say rather than 100%, let's say let's make it 120. And I'll pull this in here. We'll do the default transition here default transition here too. So now we've got a lower third that comes in kind of at the beginning. Go ahead and share the link. Nope, that's not the way we want it to work there, is it? We want the Matt's Big Dream. Do you want the lower third to flip in first? So right about there is where we're gonna want that uh, text to fade in. So here we go. Go ahead and share the link to my home. And we have that fading out then at that point right there. So let's say him do his homies again. Go ahead and share the link to 
to my homies on Facebook and Google. I could have done. A, I could have picked probably a better lower third or something. Also, the color of that one doesn't quite match. But what you can do again, you can click on these things and you can go up into color again, and you can certainly change the color. So the temperature of that one might go more toward the brown or something like that. I don't know. We might desaturate it a little bit. Uh, we might want to actually go into uh, color wheels and pick the different colors or curves. Curves might be better on this one. I might want to make it a little bit darker overall. Uh, maybe add a little more red to it. Uh, I don't know that we need quite so much blue, but we could take a little blue out or something like that and hit control save and go back to our editing 5.5 and see quite how that looks if we, if we go bring... ahead and share the link to my homies on Facebook and Google Plus you know the other thing we can do when we pulled the mat and a lot of times people don't think about doing this is resizing mat here so I can click on this if I want to go in and take Matt and scale him down so we can put Matt over here perhaps at the bottom and we can move them over to the right or something and let's say we pick a totally different lower third now okay so i'm gonna go back over here and go to backgrounds not back not lower third but backgrounds and i had one it was kind of a global type thing i thought was really kind of cool let's see if i can find that one it was uh not galaxy oh we got you look at that we got a we got a uh, globe i don't know what this one is Oh, that's a countdown. Let's see, that could be kind of cool. So let's say we get rid of this background altogether and we pull a countdown in here. And we go ahead and get rid of the shaded envy here now. And we can just put a couple more of these countdowns in. So maybe Matt's going to do a top 10 or something like that, right? So here we go. And now we've got the big number that comes up behind Matt here. Um and we're not hearing his audio. I don't know what, what I did. Maybe I did something to mute it. Didn't mean to. Go ahead and share the link to my homies on Facebook. So if we wanted to even move Matt even further out of the out of the way here a little bit, we could pull him back over this way a little bit more. And there would be Matt coming in. And um, go ahead and share the link my homies on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and all that good stuff. So there you go. That's how I sort of do my mats. Uh, and like I said, the better you can light it, you know, that's just going to make it so much easier. Um, I, I did a video the other day putting a light behind my shoulders. If I'd had some side light coming in, the light behind just basically dispelled all shadows. If you can get rid of all shadows, it's gonna be easier to pull your mat and, uh, and and make it really more believable and go around the heads and everything a little bit better and everything. You can be tighter, you don't have to soften as much. I will go ahead and tell the story I was gonna tell. Uh, so this Ultra Key, which is a pretty cool key that Adobe uses, uh, there used to be a program called Ultra and Ultra was a keying program, and it was for 480p video. So this was back along 2005, 2006, and I used it a lot on a lot of videos I did for Blue Ridge Healthcare. And I, I, somewhere I have some of those videos, maybe I'll put a link to one of those. Fantastic keying program just for keying video. Uh, so this was back when we had DV, not the Ultra HDs, and not 1080p or anything. And um, so anyway, I went to a conference in Vegas. This was a um, HAL conference, it was called. It was huge back in the day for graphic designers. And I went to a, um, I went to a seminar that featured the head of development for Adobe Premiere Pro. This was back when it was like Premiere Pro 3 or something like that. And so it was interesting. After that, it was, it, you could you watch, the, they, those guys could wow you with all the stuff they would do. And they were talking about their key in programs and they were showing how it keyed. It wasn't nearly as good as Ultra Key, I'll be honest. It was pretty cool what they could do, but they weren't pulling as good of keys as the Ultra Key. And so I remember I went up to the guy after that, and you could just walk up to these guys and talk with them. And uh, I said, you know, have you ever looked at the Ultra Key? Because I have to tell you, it's better than what you guys are doing. Ultra Key, I've never heard of it before. And so this was the this was the head developer for Adobe. So I said, yeah, yeah. And I, I remember we went to the website, I showed him the Ultra, I showed him the demos, and he stood there just in, in amazement at what Ultra would do. 
about four or five weeks later, maybe it was six weeks later, they bought Ultra, Adobe bought Ultra. So thank Tony Lee Glenn for the fact that you now have the Ultra key as part of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now they, the, the dude, wherever he is, might not admit to that, but he did not know what the Ultra key was until I pulled him aside and said, hey man, your, your key is not nearly as good as Ultra and I'm using the Ultra key. And uh, I think I even had some videos online. It was back in the day when you had to put like 360p or something like that out or 240 because everything was so slow and the codecs weren't so great. But I actually showed him some, some uh, video I think that I had even done with Ultra. So anyway, another little cool story there at the end. But folks, if you have any questions, if you think I'm not doing it as well, there might be some better way to do it, then uh, chime in and let me know. And maybe you have a, a, a link to even a better demo than mine. Peace to all who watch, subscribe to the channel if you like.